because I've arranged to get every step of the way, I don't need to get to the top. I just need to, you know, get mindful, pay attention. And that keeps it from having to get to a life or death. I have to go forward at all, at all costs. Fingers and toes be damned. I'm going. So I think by positioning myself into a, a, a place of valuing the learning that comes, I can steer clear of that, that trap. And I see it as a trap, that the only thing that's meaningful is getting to the top and everything else is failure. So I arrive on the 19th of March. The 21st, we fly to Lukla. It's a two-week trek into the base camp. Move one day, rest one day, move one day, rest one day. We're getting elevation every move. I teach at Memorial University of Newfoundland here in St. John's in the School of Human Kinetics and Recreation. So I teach people how to be outside, how to care for themselves well, how to live, be comfortable, uh, how to lead others in the outside, how to ski, snowshoe, light fires, light stoves, sea kayak, rock climb, whatever it takes to go outside. The university has been very supportive of, of my project of Everest 007 to uh, inspire the youth of the province, of which I include the, the students of the university in that, in that grouping. If, you're taking, if I'm taking on a big project, I want to have some people to have to answer to people that will keep me on track, people that will support me. So I formed a cyber community of support and that group grew from about 30 people to now it's uh, over 400. So to this list of people, I sent out free permission to give me challenges that will put me out of my comfort zone. I decided that I was gonna take a, uh, a women's studies course and ended up taking TA's women in sport class. It was me and four other guys, and the rest of them were all women. Have you become a feminist since then? I think I have, yes. They came back with things like wear a dress for a week, with high heels and pumps and shaved legs and, and makeup. And they came back with... <laughs> <laughs> Go big, do it, do it up. It almost seems so simple in, in a way, you know, to just look at something and be like, go for it. You know, I don't think I've ever met anyone that actually goes to step class with a, a backpack on. Ice falls between base camp and camp one. It's up, you know, a glacier walk up the from one to two. Yeah, you go to one, maybe you go to two, maybe you just go to one, and then you come back down. Then you go to two. Two is sort of called advanced base camp, and so you spend a lot of time at camp two. critical to have had practice staying with myself and my process and knowing that I was okay in whatever the situation because then when I was on the mountain when things got hard when things got tough when we were tired beyond tired I could remember there were times I stepped through this past September the weather turned and we actually had to deny ourselves the summit twice I gave it two different attempts and both times the weather was not climbable and so we had to turn and, and deny that summit and it's it's a it's a bitter disappointment but it also is a great teacher <laughs> that's the first time I raced the elevator <laughs> well, I have to make at least two trips on the Latsi face, one to, one for acclimatization and one for the summit baby. It's broken up by camp three, so generally people will move from two to three, sleep, and then move from three to four. And I think it's five to six hours of climbing between each. You can't stay at four for long. It's in the technical, technically, you know, what gets called the death zone. So you are, you are basically losing ground anytime you're there. You shouldn't be there and your body's not keeping up. So if you stay there too long, you won't ever catch up. By the time you get to the top, you've got 4,500 meters of face below you, and that'll get my attention. I like to eat. Yeah. Um, and the wonderful
wonderful thing about training is when you're burning 13 to 1500 calories per day in training, one can eat almost anything she wants. I've come to apply for the uh, mountain climbing job. <sighs> I'd like to climb Mount Everest. Do you know how to eat? Yes, I know how to eat. Do you know how to eat fast? I know how to eat fast food. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you know how to eat fast food fast? I'll train for a few hours and then I'll have a pretty good breakfast and a couple hours after that I'll have a pretty good lunch and a couple after hours after that I'll have a snack and then a pretty good dinner. Yeah, I mean overall I try to eat pretty well and, and you know, steer clear of too much junk food, but I, I have a propensity for chocolate and vanilla dips. I need a vanilla dip. Turkey on whole wheat. Large tea with milk. Hold on. Oh, she's slippery. Oops, I should have done the screen. All right. I used to say I would do the climb if the fundraising came together. Well, at some point I realized it might come together, it might not, but it needed a leap of faith on my part. To, to sort of keep the energy moving. I needed to stop saying if I was going and I needed to say when I was going. That's financially irresponsible. I should be saving for retirement. <laughs> okay. If you're not willing to pay for it, why should anyone else be? I don't know how to do anything half-heartedly. You know, maybe sometimes to a fault. Having these big projects the last few years have given me this sort of ultimate thing to focus on. And all the other less important things to me can just fall away. Security is seductive. It's very seductive. And I often said, it's going to be pretty darn hard to give this up. Because I, I sort of, I think in some ways, have believed in that narrative of, you know, you work along and at some point you realize you don't have a passion, that you've got a crisis and you have to give up what you've got to go after, you know, the thing that's going to be more meaningful. A year after taking my refuge vows, I took my bodhisattva vows. You know, so dedicating myself to the service of others. People are making changes in themselves. People are going after things they wouldn't ordinarily go after. Because I, ch I share my process, they see me do it, and then they go for it. where the, the idea of the project and wanting to inspire youth to be more physically active and to following their dreams came to being is this idea of being the Bodhisattva Mountaineer. That it's not so much for me anymore, but it's for this, this sense of, you know, for the greater good. How mountaineering at the moment is my practice. You know, the mountain is my cushion. A lot about staying there and sticking with and and being, you know, being uncomfortable, having it, having legs hurt or back hurt or having mind hurt and staying in the process. But it is true. I mean, one of the things that I ask my audiences is, is what is your Everest? At the moment, I'm working on actual mountains, but there's, you know, there's metaphoric mountains that we that we climb my Everest is not your Everest and your Everest is not mine our paths may intersect we may learn from each other along the way and there might be a multitude of Everests I think in a lifetime or there may just be one big Everest but we got to find our Everests <laughs>